So sugar free and gluten. Oh, okay. I'm glad you know me. This one thing I'm also here doesn't have sugar. Uh, it is, but it's also low sugar. What do you have in full sugar? I'm Phil Gunn. I was a pro cyclist for 10 years, racing all over the world. Now I'm retired, but I'm not done suffering on my bike, climbing mountains as fast as I can, and going on crazy adventures. I couldn't be the best at racing, and I'm definitely the worst at retiring. Welcome to Worst Retirement Ever. There we go. Folks, so a little bit quiet on the YouTubes lately. Uh, you probably didn't notice because the Tour de France is going on. I don't like to make videos that compete with the Tour de France. So I took July uh, a little bit a little bit lighter side, focus more on training. Uh, I'm training for the Mount Washington Hill Climb. So this video I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what that looks like and why I'll give you a little glimpse into uh, training in general and training for hill climbing specifically. But I think you will get something out of this that applies whether you're a climber or a sprinter or whether you're focusing on Mount Washington or whatever you've got uh, in your goals. And enjoy that for a second, sorry. Shut up, Phil, enjoy that. Now Mount Washington is, uh, it's in New Hampshire, uh, end of the summer every year. It's a legendary event at this point, it's been going on forever. Uh, it crosses many eras of pro cycling. Uh, I first did it in 2008, I was an amateur based in New England on the Fjorda Fruta team. So I won it in 2008, went back in 2009. I was racing for Jelly Belly then. I won it a second time that year. And then, you know, I took a, a, little, a little hiatus, uh, racing professionally all over the place, not, in, not as much in New England. Uh, my second year retired, I thought it'd be fun to come back and see if I could break the record. The Mount Washington Hill Climb record, there's times that go back uh, to the 70s. Obviously they get faster and faster. And then there's kind of an era in the 90s where <laughs> they get a little too fast. Uh, and then they get slower again, <laughs> as you can imagine. So uh, my times, the first time was like in the 54 minutes. Uh, I got down to 51. The record is Tom Danielson, which is in the high 49s. Now they've since, they've cleared out that record as of this year. They're wiping the record clean uh, for two reasons. One is the doping era makes those records a little bit questionable. Well, not a little bit questionable. Uh, the women's time is insanely fast. You know, the men's times are, what was ever going on at the time, uh, the men's times are definitely, you know, Tom Danielson and Tyler Hamilton are the top two. They were definitely uh, doping during their career. So they're wiping it clean. The other reason for that is there was a dirt section, uh, which they have paved. So there's no longer dirt, which most of the times I did it, it didn't really affect the time. Mount Washington is a very, it's, it's weird because it's just like a beautiful New England summer day at the bottom and then the top, it's like you're on the surface of the moon. They have some of the highest wind speeds ever recorded, like anywhere. Uh, so it's very condition dependent, um, but you know, doping would probably help. So anyway, they cleared all the records. Uh, the fast times this year will be the newest records and it'll go from there. They have not, however, cleared the Strava, uh, which is fine because Strava doesn't have the old, uh, the old doping era times. Um, someone did flag my Strava. I was second on it. Someone flagged it. Uh, whatever. That's, you know, I don't know why I didn't. It was legit. It was on video, for fuck's sake. I did make a really good video for when I did Mount Washington the last time. I actually had like a very legit camera editing crew. Uh, so have a look at that one if you want to know more about the event. Back in the day, the prize to win, you know, in the, the Danielson, Tyler Hamilton era, I think they won a Subaru. Probably like a lease on a Subaru. Um, then it was $5,000 to win. By the time I won it, it was $1,500. We still went a long way for a pro cyclist $10 a day, you know? If I am able to win it this year, I'm not sure what the prize money is, uh, but it'll put me in the, the four-time winner's club, which only one male has done, that is Tyler Hamilton. Uh, Amy Vassie, uh, for the women, has won it. Maybe even more than that. She's won it a lot. Uh, the other three-time winner of the event is, uh, is weather, which forced cancellations uh, several times over the years. <laughs> they're just, they just look at the hill, they're like, no, we're not going up that today. So it's nice to have a goal, uh, but I'm also just going because I love the event. Uh, New England in the summer is beautiful. Uh, it's a really just like unique, fun event, good soul. Like, also I've got uh, Jeremy Powers uh, lives in Massachusetts, so I'm gonna stop 
pick him up along the way. He's gonna come with. Uh, and Ian Boswell uh, lives like kind of right at the bottom. Neither one of them has done the event. Uh, Jeremy's, you know, from New England, basically like the mayor of New England, because New England's a city. I'm not gonna look it up. And then Ian, he's a climber. Like Jeremy has an excuse because he was a cyclocross racer, not obsessed with hour long 12% climbs. But uh, and Ian, by the time he moved there, I think he moved there mostly when he was retiring and he was on Sky and Katusha, other things to do. But really like, if you're a New Englander, whether you love climbing or not, you've got to experience Mount Washington Hill Climb. So I'm gonna drag them, not literally up, but I'm gonna drag them to it. They have to get up themselves. And we're gonna have a whole range of experiences, me trying to, to win the thing, and then, well, we'll see what they decide to do. I feel like whether Ian's up to it or not, he's gonna go to the front because it's deep within his soul. Uh, and Jeremy, I feel like he's gonna get the whole shot because he's a cyclocross racer and he can't help it. And then he'll probably back off and, uh, and complain a lot. But we'll get them in my video too. All right, so training. Uh, I set the goal for this event about eight or nine weeks out uh, from the climb. So that gave me and my coach uh, two four week blocks of, uh, of good training to, to plan it out. Uh, so I sat down with Coach Fastcat, kind of looked at where I was at and, uh, and where I wanted to be. So what you do is I look at the, the goal for the climb. It's a pretty steady effort. Uh, I want to do it around 50, 51 minutes. Uh, so that's what you're training for. And I want to do it uh, in the 360 to 400 watts range. So what you do is you look at that and then you just break it up into little parts based on where you're at and how much time you have. So I spent a lot of time in the 360 to 375 kind of range uh, until I can do it just for an hour solid. Uh, so, so week one started with four by 10 minutes. So uh, 10 minute efforts, four times. And uh, the goal is to do five minutes rest in between those. But if I need it, uh, I would just take a little more rest uh, between efforts until I can make sure that I hit that zone. Uh, then I did a three by 15 minute. So now we're at 45 minutes total, same idea. And then just like one long good endurance ride uh, where I would focus on steeper climbs in Malibu, which isn't too hard to find. Uh, and then the Sunday group ride, which is the only kind of chance that I get real speed. Uh, I try not to miss those on Sundays in LA. So the next week, kind of the same thing, but one notch harder. So instead of uh, four by 10 and three by 15, it was three by 15 and two by 30. So now we're at 45 minutes and an hour uh, at the effort we want. And then endurance ride and the group ride. All right, and then we had a little bit of a departure. Uh, we had one week of, of shorter VO2, kind of sharper efforts. Uh, the, the thought behind that is like specificity is good, but you don't want to be too specific. You know, you don't want to be only good at one speed. Uh, a little variety. I think that's good for the heart, for the, for the HRV on the, the whoop, uh, stuff like that. Uh, speaking of whoop, I had some really good HRV and resting heart rate uh, as we got into this block. But then over the course of those, those three weeks of the build, uh, the resting heart rate went up, a little fatigued, definitely feel it in my legs. Uh, so let me go to a rest week. You wanna do a rest week every four weeks or so. That's kind of the general guideline. Rest week meaning you cut the volume down, uh, maybe about half what you did the previous week. Uh, you do similar intensity, but, but fewer efforts. So you kind of keep the system going uh, and you take two days off in a row. Uh, most weeks I'll get one day off, two weeks off in a row comes every four weeks. Now, during the rest week, uh, I also do some core work. Oh, I do core work, try to do something every week, do a little more on the rest week. Uh, but using the Wahoo system, once we they have a good series of, they have all their bike stuff, but they do have really good like body weight and yoga, uh, little 20, 10 to 20 minute uh, workouts. So I've been doing those uh, from certain angles. My typical four and a half pack is up to five. Also went stand up paddle boarding, took the inflatable one I got from Decathlon last summer. Um, that is a good core workout also, if you don't have a, a puppy on there trying to get you soaked. Uh, we made it though, we made it. She was, she was a little scared, but she's fine. So for that rest week, now I'm up in a, a Big Bear. Now altitude isn't really what you need. I'm not gonna say it's specific training for Mount Washington. Uh, it's kind of good for you in general. Definitely specific for Mount Evans. Mount Washington, don't think you need to do an altitude block. Um, I'm up here, you know, it's good to do endurance good to do a little but kind of it's just get away from the heat get away from the city I love it up here um, if you follow me for a while you know 
Uh, I did a lot of videos in Big Gravel, play, whole playlist from here. This was the first area that I kind of visited in California. Made me fall in love with it. And I, I sold my cabin a couple of years ago. Uh, so now I'm just up visiting. I miss it, that's all. So it's like a training soul vacation. So when I get home from the altitude trip and the endurance block, have a couple more weeks to, to reduce my volume again, hit those harder efforts, hit those right uh, to kind of simulate the Mount Washington effort again and, and kind of polish off the, the legs there, polish off those systems uh, before we hit it. Ideally, your, your race, your target event uh, is your best power. It is your hardest day. You know, marathoners aren't doing 27 mile runs uh, to get ready for the, the marathon is the biggest one uh, that they do. Now Mount Washington at 12% gradient, it is a power to weight contest. So obviously I'm working on the power, but last time I raced it, I did weigh 148 pounds. So I'm gonna try and go from 152 to 148. I uh, got two months to do that. So that's still within like my normal race weight range. I just haven't had to be there for a couple of years, but do it slow and safe and then uh, eat pizza till it's right back to normal. Then lastly, of course, uh, equipment is always a fun thing about Mount Washington. Try to get your bike as light as possible, uh, taking off parts, stuff like that. Uh, VeloFix, I think is at my house now, uh, working on that. So we'll, we'll go through the bike in another video when it's ready. I gotta say an altitude camp is a lot better now uh, when I can bring the family versus back in the day when I was sharing a bad hotel room uh, in the middle of nowhere with no offense to Alex House. Dog's not pictured. Yeah, the dogs are here too. We're just not riding bikes. The, uh, tonight we're gonna make uh, Phil's cookie. I forget, when you when you bake cookies at altitude, is it faster or slower or a different temperature? I don't mess with the oven. Okay, I well, I'll Google it, fine, thank you. Um, Emily, Emily's half of her car on the way up here was filled with plants from home that she doesn't want to die That's while we're gone for two it's weeks. It's the ones that I'm emotionally attached to. I brought, I brought with me. Um, I left other things behind so I could bring them with me. I'm curious to see how they do now. She did leave some plants behind, so pray for them. You brought all the plants. Did you bring, did you bring, you brought like clothes and stuff too? Um, I mean, yeah, some. I left some things behind that I didn't need, like underwear. You don't need underwear in Socks Big Bear. Are more important than underwear. You don't need underwear. You don't really need sleeves. That's true. Um, I brought my bathing suit. Yeah, this is where I, I get to go to bring out my, my inner redneck. Luckily, decathlon has lots of sleeveless options. See you next time.